You are listening to the Boundless Enigma Podcast with Sam Zins and Ryan Mulkentine. On this podcast, we dive into the mind, reality, and existence itself to provide you with boundless ideas and insights. I was just talking about um, moving. I just moved out of uh, my mother's house, so Mm -hmm. I'm in my first place of my own now. Um, So I've had a couple hectic days here, but you know we're getting in the swing of things um kind of trying to roll with the punches so to speak yeah you know Uh, um so like with the excitement comes stuff that just you know other possibly negative things that come up with the change like there's exciting things then there's the the like problems that might arise like wi-fi issues or like you know having roommates now like what talk to me about like that experience so far because that's that's a major like that's a big thing dude yeah no for sure um the yeah the big big change is obviously being yeah i'm living with two people that i have never lived with before um and obviously like they do things differently than i do and as i you know i do things differently than they do so you know just kind of learning how to work with each other you know um so far no no issues you know i i don't have a problem i mean like I said, we all function differently. So there's obviously things that I would change maybe around the house that they have currently. And I'm sure they'd be vice versa. So, you know, but it's nothing, nothing, no, uh, no negativity in, in any yeah. way. But, um, you know, but just, you know, it'll take time to just adjust, uh, not to mention just a new environment to adjust to. You know, I've, I've been living at my mom's house now for three or four years. So I, you know, learning how to, you know, live in a new environment. Uh, yeah. not to mention I'm living in the city now, so it's, it's a different feeling. Wow. Okay. Where you're, are you down in Clifton? I am. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So nice. it's, 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 it's a new, it's a totally different environment than being out in a suburb, you know? So, yeah. How do you feel about like being like kind of in a more hustle bustle area? Um, it's going to take a lot of adjusting, uh, because, you know, I'm, I tend to be a more, I'd say laid back kind of person. So I, I like to be, take things more methodically and slowly, but you know, not that I can't still do that, but just kind of learning to do that in the midst of, you know, the car honking and, you know, ambulances flying by yeah. <laughs> and people just walking outside of my house, all these things. So it's like, you know, just adjusting to all that is definitely going to take some time, but I, I feel comfortable with the whole thing. I'm, I think it, I think it's a good learning experience for me because, like I said, I'm I've not had any, any of that, so just kind of learning to like adjust to the whole uh, hustle bustle environment is definitely going to be a change hmm. for sure. But, That's cool though. I feel like I was yeah. so excited when I, I mean, given I was like a freshman, but like so like mm-hmm. three or four years ago, but. Yeah. I was so I remember being so excited when like I got my first place on my own. I yeah. don't know. I mean cuz you you've had a lot of freedom already like living with your parents like you you kind of had like free reign to kind of do what you wanted. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I didn't totally have free reign when I got my first apartment. So like it was so like the freedom and possibility that just like opened up in front of me like <laughs> I was like so excited and I, I really went crazy with it, honestly. Yeah. Because I just hadn't had a taste of that freedom so, so much in the past. Yeah. That's so interesting. I was going to ask you what it was like as a freshman to move out. Cause you know, now I'm like, I don't even know what, what year are we like freaking junior, senior. I don't even know what we are. <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, ever since high school, I just haven't even kept track of what like year I am, but yeah. you know, point being like, it's definitely a different experience as a freshman. I'd imagine moving out than where, where I'm at right now, moving out. So yeah. like it, so you said you went crazy. Did, did you feel like you just, I don't know. Like, like it's like know, what is that? It's about? like imagine like you were like really hungry, and then all of a sudden you were left alone with the giant feast, <laughs> <laughs> and you could just eat whatever you wanted. Now, given after you eat, you know you're gonna kind of probably have a stomach ache, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a couple hangovers in there, some really <laughs> bad ones. I had a couple like you know, bad, like dating scares with some like crazy Tinder dates and stuff. And like, <laughs> but like it was at the time, it just felt so good to just shove yeah. the food in your face, just eat the yeah. cake, eat, yeah, keep eating like... the cake, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, 
it after a while like once you get once you overeat too many times it just becomes like unappealing and then you start to like moderate yourself like if with using that analogy it's like yeah. I, would, I slowly like like i have great memories of like going crazy but at the same time it's like i don't have any desire to i don't even drink anymore dude i haven't like drank alcohol in like a month and a half i haven't had like a glass of beer in like a month and a half like i have no <laughs> i totally burned through all of that stuff dude but yeah. at, the, at the beginning oh it just felt so good <laughs> yeah because that's just something that you had never had before so i that, that makes complete sense that that would happen you know like yeah me being in the position i'm in you know i have been able to do all these things whenever i want anyways yeah so like me moving out I've, it's a totally different situation it's like yeah yes. I, I, I i can definitely see what you're saying though about seeing the feast because in a sense i do see that feast but i think just because of you know the the time of my life that i'm in it's a different looking feast than maybe what you experienced as yeah. a freshman um definitely the feast that i'm seeing is like oh wow like i i can uh schedule my life exactly the way that i want it pretty much now it's mm -hmm. like i don't have any responsibility to you know do things that my mom wants me to do you know yeah. and, and all these things isn't and that's not like i'm not going to help her ever with anything but it's like now that like i'm not living under her household yeah i don't have that responsibility anymore because it's, it's my roommates aren't going to like text me and be like hey make sure you do like all the dishes and all these things tonight it's like no like this is this is, these are my dishes now so it's yeah. like i'm gonna do my dishes you know so right and it's, and it's, it's like you kind of like even though you didn't like move out and like when i moved out it's like at the same times i think we were both experiencing like kind of going a little crazy at the same times anyway like yeah like i i assume i don't know like yeah. did you did you ever have like a period where you kind of like oh yeah like drank a lot or like you know got really high every day or something yeah oh 100 yeah. it was it just had to be a little more discreet because you know yeah. i didn't have my own house you know and yes. like you, you like you did where i was like and i'd imagine your feast was bigger than my feast potentially because because of the fact <laughs> that you were able to do whatever you want but um yeah but no i definitely did you know and i think that's a normal thing to go through just yeah. you know you 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 catch an catch a little bit of freedom like that and it's like oh my god like this is crazy i can do this you know and it's like then you just you do it all right you know so it's like you know like i, I yeah. had a friend's house that you know we could go to and his parents were pretty chill so we would just yeah. go over there and that's where the feast would tend to happen so yeah <laughs> you know uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it because like it, it put me in a position now where it's like I realized like oh that was kind of crazy like I don't want to ever like do that again like not that I never yeah. want to get like, super drunk or super high ever again but it's like I never want to be doing it as often as I was so right <laughs> yeah it's like fun. I mean it just it just like it gives you a perspective it gives you I think the importance of it is like you get to taste it in a way so that you know like you're not really missing out afterwards mm -hmm. like like i think like it's called like burning through karma like when you have like specific periods of your life where you feel like you need to experience things or do things like mm -hmm. some people go through a hoe phase where they just like sleep with a bunch of people because yeah. they've been completely without sex like their entire lives mm -hmm. and then they suddenly like are open up to the world of hooking up and then they're like thrown into that yeah. or there's like like me, like the drinking thing, my freshman year, like I got to experience it. But now looking back on it, it's like, well, now I know I'm not missing out. And mm -hmm. I know that like it, that's not the stuff that makes me happy. It's like finding peace and enjoying things as they are right now is what makes me happy. Yeah. But to only the only way to know that, that that's the case is to like go through all the other stuff and burn through all the other crap, you know? Definitely, definitely. I think it's definitely important to experience things like that. And, you know, I think that's the importance in, in being um you know or at least for parents to be um like respectful of their their children's you know desires i guess you could say because it's like you know yeah. if you didn't you know i i feel like if if we didn't get to experience that um that kind of like craziness for a while you know then it, it could have turned into something worse because then it's a little more secretive and it's like oh it's yeah. just like very like yeah like oh like, should i be doing this and then and then you know it's like you know it's you keep doing it yeah it's like, it, do you want to like kind of allow the their development to happen in that way, which is it's necessary to kind of burn through that karma, right? Mm -hmm. 
do you want to allow that and support them in whatever way that you can and give them advice and guide them through the process? You know, let them get burned a little bit. Let them, you know, get some knocks on the head throughout the process so that they're <laughs> learning. Or are you going to be the parent, which I've actually seen somebody whose parents are like super overbearing, won't let them do anything. And it yeah. drives the kid. It drove this person to like the extreme where now they're like a drug addict mm -hmm. and like they're just not good in the head because they felt like they have all this family shame placed on them and they can't go and talk to their parents because it's they're so against it and they're mm -hmm. so far down this rabbit hole. And you know what I mean? It's like it, you have to it's just not a good. It's just not a good way to go. You got to be more allowing and like allow the process to like go the way it's supposed to go because like I went through a crazy period. I, I'm going to expect my kids to go through a crazy period. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like you can't expect you know, somebody to not do that, you know, it's like, 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 what, why, what do you think, like, if you really think you can stop somebody from actually, like, from doing something, then you're just very naive, yeah. because you, you can't stop somebody from doing something, so you may, may as well, not, not necessarily allow them to do it, but not, you know, shame them for it, you know, because that's just yeah. going to cause exactly what you said with that uh, person, you know, it's, it's just going to cause them to go deeper down this negative rabbit hole, and, and not feel um, safe with talking about it to anybody, you know? I mean, and that's super important to feel safe to talk to people, you yeah. know, because that's, it gets dangerous when you, you know, get bunched up in your own little little rabbit hole, so to speak. Yeah. You know, and can I, twi can I twist this topic just a Dude, little bit? Dude, of course. So I was talking to my girlfriend last night about things. Um, and so backstory on me, for people listening, as you as you know, my parents got divorced when I was like 15, I think, I think it was 15. And anyways, after that, I, I sorry, backtrack even more. Um, I feel like in, in our household, I never saw what, um, you know, like love really was like, because, you know, I, I, I got love, and I saw love, but it was like this, like, it, it wasn't to the fullest, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. to what I now see is p possible with love. And so anyways, but so after the divorce, it, it, I feel like it caused me to like go in, in my own rabbit hole, so to speak, of not being able to talk about it because I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was about because it was never really shown to me, you know? So I feel like that is comparable to what we were just talking about in the sense of you know you 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 don't show your kid the ropes type of thing mm -hmm. so they're gonna you know retract and try to figure it out on their own and things are gonna seem like a tall task and they're gonna fall down in their own rabbit hole and things are just gonna be suppressed mm -hmm. you know so yeah interesting i yeah. guess i never thought about like what like how love being shown like with the parents in impacts like the like kids in a way like yeah like i don't know i mean my parents were like super affectionate but like they like they were still like give each other hugs and like cuddles on the couch or whatever so like i did yeah. i did see that and like i think my my parents like unknowingly modeled like healthy relationships mm -hmm. in a way. well not in the beginning actually they had a period where they really they they went at it with each other for like i don't know there's a period where like they had a rough patch yeah and you know but i don't really like remember that i think i must have been like too young i like barely remember that so my memories are mostly of like them being very loving to each other in a way and who knows how much them fighting when i was younger has actually impacted me without me even knowing like i don't even know yeah absolutely absolutely you know and then that's not necessarily a bad thing that you know they went through rough patches because like everybody does you know yeah. and, and obviously when you're living in a household with somebody day in and day out like tensions will get high at points you know it's like it's bound to happen kind of ridiculous to think that that wouldn't be the case so yeah. you know but no i mean i, I was actually going to say I, I remember going over to your house when i was younger and seeing your parents being affectionate and and, and not you remember not, something like that i do remember that because you know like i said hmm. i grew up in a household where it was you know almost felt weird to do that you know and i never felt weird when i would see like your parents or and not just your parents but like other parents of my friends yeah. that i'd go over and they act like that but i'd be like i'd be like oh wow like that's kind of crazy like it, it 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 almost like threw me for a loop it's like well yeah. that's kind of weird you know yeah 
I think like people, people like wear like the, how it shapes them in a negative way when things aren't modeled. Like it's just like a, a product of, of modeling the parents, mm -hmm. but it's that like that love isn't like withheld from any one person at all. Like that, that state of being able to love somebody and like being able to access that kind of love, like mm -hmm. no matter whose parents you've had, no matter what, you know what I mean? Like if one yeah. kid has parents that like hated each other and fought all the time versus the kid whose parents like loved each other so much and were visible, you know, maybe that one kid has been conditioned now to like be uncomfortable with love and the other kid being mm -hmm. comfortable with love. But the two kids are still kind of on the same playing field because that that state of love is always available you know what i mean absolutely like it is. it's just about what have you been conditioned it's not about like what is possible to access it's just one kid is is like reminded somewhere in the subconscious that that's okay and one kid in the subconscious is thinking it's not but or or just kind of confused about it you know what i mean but the love is is always available yeah. it's just about allowing yourself to access it uh, abs absolutely. And, and I was going to bring that up. That's actually exactly what I was telling my girlfriend about. I was like, you know, like, sure, there are like, I, I think I've, I've grown so much in the realm of love, but yeah, I'm still, I, I still have that, what you were just talking about, that subconscious, like, um, resistance towards it at times where you know it'll it'll feel weird and I'll, I'll like i can literally like feel like this is what in my mind this is what it looks like i'm doing it it's like it's like i do that you know it's like i yeah. like covers and it's like and it's so subconscious it's not yeah like and and I, but looking back on it like i i see myself do that from time to time i will literally feel in my mind it do that and then i'll just move on you know yeah and that's just something i need to get better at is 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 falling into it and looking at it instead of looking away from it right. look at it you know? Right. Yeah. I mean that, that there's a whole section of psychology dedicated to, the, to this called like shadow work, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and like our shadow selves, like the parts of mm -hmm. ourselves that we feel like are, we're either like ashamed of, or like something that like we're uncomfortable with about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's about like, and basically like the solution to it is allowing it is basically notice the parts of yourself that you don't like or find negative, mm -hmm. observe them and love them. Just give those parts of you love. Just observe them and say, ah, wow, that's that's interesting. That's there. Wow. Well, you know what? I'm going to love that part of me anyway. And and then in the loving of it, it transforms it and dissolves it. Mm -hmm. Absol absolutely. 100%. You know, I, the, the visual that I was talking about last night was I imagine myself looking this way and there's just just plain a plain grass field that an endless grass field and there's just nothing there and then you turn around and there's this like huge like city you know mm -hmm. and and what i i feel myself do is you know i'll turn and i'll look at the city i'll be like oh my god that's that's a ton of crap you know and then i, I look back at the grass because it's like this is easier to look at there's not much here you know what i mean there's nothing yeah so what can be very helpful is just like you said, just like turn and like look at that city and just don't be yeah. worried about everything that it holds and just look at it, you know, and, and fall yeah. into it. And, and that's just all it takes really, you know? And um, yeah, it's honestly, it's honestly easy, even though it doesn't feel easy. Yes. I think like we as humans feel like we have a natural tendency to like get away from things that make us feel negative and go towards things that make us feel good. Like, I mean, that's, it sounds like the most simple and obvious thing in the world, but like, it's important to like, think about this because when it comes to like parts of ourselves that maybe we don't like, we just run away from them instead of facing them. When yeah. the counterintuitive best thing to do would actually be to face it head on mm -hmm. and accept it and allow it, which is like, what, how does that make sense? Yeah. Because in a way, even though it might be hard, Think about in the long run, it's like delaying gratification. It might be difficult in the shorthand to face it, but then once you do face it and love it and accept it and dissolve it, then it feels even better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it sounds so counterintuitive because it's, it just, it, it feels like it's going to be this, this 
bad thing, like overwhelming yeah. thing. And, you know, it might be, let's say it could be it bad. It totally could it, be. And it could be overwhelming. You know, it totally could be. But in the long run, yeah, it's so much better to just do it because you're going to appreciate that you did it. You know, I mean, you could yeah. you, you could keep delaying something or you could just keep or, or you could just base it and then boom, you know, it might be a rough day for the next yeah. like two days or a week or however long it might be. But then after that, that time, it, it just it's, things get better, you know, so. Yeah. Interesting. Have you been learning anything like new re- recently or have anything that's like, I don't know, because I feel like usually there's like something that there's something new that we're like learning about individually. Like we oh, come together yeah, like, I mean, oh, like, what's this? You know? I mean, the what, what we just talked about, that was one thing. Um, yeah. But. True, true, um, true. Um, uh, this is more so a fact type of thing, but I, I found out that we have about twelve to 60,000 thoughts every single day. Like, that's pretty insane. Um, yeah. I've been kind of thinking about that recently, and it's like, wow. I I honestly, before I looked it up, I, I guessed that we, I had like maybe like three, four thousand thoughts every single day. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had no idea it was twelve to 60,000. So it's yeah. it kind of goes to show like how subconsciously we think right well i mean and it goes to show like how much we're shaping our reality constantly with our thoughts it's like every few seconds it's like you're evaluating good or bad this that about something with a thought like you're placing your thought veil your thought lens over whatever you're looking at you know like it's like i mean how i think our heartbeats like let's look it up let's look it up how often does the heart beat a day, a hundred thousand times a day. So basically, for every two to three heartbeats you have, you're having a thought. That's pretty insane. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Like that's how constantly wow. you're putting over the lens of thought over whatever's appearing in your reality. Man, and you know that just I feel like to me it just makes it so obvious that it's so important to be aware of thoughts you know like yeah. i'm not saying every single thought but it's important yeah. to be aware of like the bigger thoughts potentially or and not even just right. the, not just the bigger ones but just in general it's important to be aware of thoughts i guess is what i'm saying yeah and it's interesting how like a thought can really influence how you feel mm-hmm. again sounds obvious but like i'm just like thinking about like some times where like i would look at something think a thought and then have a negative reaction to it. Yeah. And it's like, I think we, it's easy to like skip over the fact that we just had a thought and Mm -hmm. we immediately make the association between what's in the reality that we're seeing and the emotion. And you're immediately just like this thing negative instead of thinking like, Oh wait, actually there's an inter intermediary step that is happening up here. Literally every two to three heartbeats. It's like, that's, yeah. It, it's important to have a method to stop and observe the thoughts so that yeah. you can understand wh- how you're placing a lens, which is where like meditation and mindfulness come into play. It's Absolutely. what everyone talks about. It's got some truth to it. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I, I'm trying to put my finger on it. What, like, what is a healthy amount of awareness of thought? You know, like how, what, what is that? You know? Oh, I mean, like the great, like spiritual mystics and Zen monks or whatever, like, you know, they, their goal is like Samadhi, like in Hinduism, it's called Samadhi, which is like the state of no thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like that's Mm -hmm. like the ultimate, like, if you can, if you can learn to get into a state of no thoughts, like all, like on command, like you're a master, like that is the end goal of, of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So like to them, like you it's possible to achieve that but i don't know like how so basically seeing things exactly as they are for what they are without any thought lens at all which is crazy yeah that that is that really is crazy because it feels like even when i have no thoughts there's still a thought about having no thoughts so then you haven't so then you're not you haven't stopped thinking at that point then right right but even even (laughs) even in (laughs) i know that, that is that is very true but even in like moments where I'm not thinking about having no thoughts, 
there are still thoughts. I I, I feel like there's still like subconscious thoughts. Like, is yeah. it, is it really possible to have no thoughts? I think it's possible, according to the spiritual literature, you know. <laughs> but like, do I think like for my personal experience, like I, if you spend an hour in meditation, meaning just like sitting down and consciously trying to observe and slow down your mind, mm -hmm. I think you can drastically slow, slow it down. Like, I think you can, I think it's possible. Yeah. I, I definitely think it's possible to slow it down. I don't know. Oh yeah. To the point of no thoughts. Like, I mean, maybe if you're a monk who dedicates their entire life to meditating, like maybe, right. I don't, I don't know if it's realistic for like the average human. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely not a practical thing to accomplish, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's I, I made a YouTube video uh, like a month ago or like a month and a half ago about like, like what, what should you do if you don't feel like meditating? Hmm. And like, basically what I was saying was like, don't force yourself to meditate. All right. It's like people, yeah. whenever you have to schedule and force yourself to do a habit, it's like, it never works. Like everyone just gives up after like day three. So it's yeah. like, Instead, like what I like to do is I just like to like bring a mindful moment to like whatever my day is, like mm -hmm. take three minutes and mindfully do the dishes, observe it and be as, as at peace with doing the dishes as possible. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's just, and that feels so much better because it feels like you're not pressured to do it. You're just being mindful for like one moment a day. And that feels like so good. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's a good point because we don't always have the uh not not necessarily the time but the energy i guess to want to meditate every single day or be but being mindful every single day is feels far less strenuous because yeah. you know you can just take like three deep breaths before you leave the house you know it's like that kind of thing um i mean i i just did that like a couple of days ago i didn't feel like meditating so i just was like you know what i'm going to take three deep breaths before i leave the house and it it made me feel so much better, and also it 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 almost it's like a form of keeping the habit going, even though you didn't actually just perform that habit. It's right. like it's like okay, like I still did this. I'm getting better every single day, but I'm not forcing myself to get better every single day. You know? Yeah, yeah. So and and that like I feel like that stuff adds up over time because it's if you can keep you know doing that and even if every like two or three days you feel like you know I don't feel like meditating I just want to take a few deep breaths before I leave the house it's like it still keeps you on track with meditating yeah. you know if if that's what you want if you that if that's what you want to do which that yeah. is what I want to do so yeah agreed agreed yeah. um have you heard of something I'm totally gonna switch gears here. That's cool. Have you heard of something called QHHT? I can't say I have. No. So it stands for quantum healing hypnotherapy. Okay. And it's pretty crazy, dude. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. So I was introduced to the topic by Jack Birding, actually. Do you know, like hmm. the guy who was on like episode 11 or 12 or something like that? Yeah. Episode 13? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and he did QHHT, which is basically, um, it's a hypnotherapy. It stands for quantum healing hypnotherapy. So it's a hypnotherapy where you get into this like hypnotized state and they take you into like the deepest hypnosis state they can. Wow. And it starts to like you, your personality and mind like kind of goes to sleep and your subconscious mind comes up. And so- wow as they're asking you questions and they record this whole thing. And so as they ask you questions, they they're talking to like the deepest, most subconscious part of you. That's like basically impossible to access in every day that, but the subconscious mind, this is, this is what's like kind of controlling you and like at the deepest parts of the mind, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So essentially they get you into the state and they do this, they ask all these questions and it's like an hour to two hours. They get it all on camera. So you can like watch your session back when you're fully back and like see what your subconscious had to say. Yeah. And some of the stuff is like super 
crazy. Like it's talking about like your purpose here on earth. Like, like what's your purpose? Like, what are you doing alive? Like you can ask that and like, you'll come up with like an answer for yourself about like, what am I really doing here? Why am I alive? Wow. And it's that like, is crazy. yeah. And you can get some like crazy answers. Like who's to say like, it's, it's real. But like when, if you were to watch a session of QHHT on YouTube, like you can watch someone's recorded session. Mm -hmm. It will give you chills, bro. It's insane. Yeah, I'm, so, I'll definitely give that a look. Um, you know, I, I feel like people, some people maybe get scared off when they hear hypnosis because it's, yeah. it, feel, it, it sounds like a, like a very like loopy, like um, wizardry type yeah. like thing, you know? I know, it's, I know. It totally it can scare people. Yeah. But, you know, honestly, for a while I was, I thought of that is being such that what i just Dude. explained but but then i i looked into it more i'm like oh wow this is actually legit stuff you know? yeah very legit or like stuff. maybe like you have like again this, these are just like thoughts that are masking what's reality right so it's like mm -hmm. when you think of hypnotherapy like you think of like magicians and like doing an act yeah. and how like magicians are always doing you know it's always fake magic and stuff and so like when you see a hypno hypno trick person do something yeah, like that you're like oh whatever it's just yeah whatever some sort of trick yeah but in reality it's like th there's actually like practicing like hypnotherapists that help you like get rid of addictions deal with like phobias with hypnotherapy so yeah, that's so cool there's like a basis for this in psychology and um i think was it uh freud or young or i don't know one of the great old psychologists Mm -hmm. was working with hypnotherapy mm -hmm. and when he would get people into the deep 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 hypnosis they would start saying some like crazy shit and it scared him and so when he like advised people to like do hypnotherapy he was like don't get them into a deep state like get them into like a like a mid mid-level hypno hypnosis state because that's where you can do like the psychology work and like the therapy and stuff because mm. when you would get, when he would get to the deepest levels of hypnotherapy, people would start like channeling God and like saying like really crazy, like spiritual shit yeah. and like how, and, and like, I don't know, but he got like freaked out by it because yeah, it was I, just some crazy stuff that people were saying. Yeah. I, I'd imagine that if you're going to take somebody, somebody to that level, you would have had to have been to that level yourself. Because then it wouldn't be as scary, you know. Yeah. The, at least that's that's what it appears to me. But that that stuff is that 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 stuff is very real. Um, it's just all about like surrendering to the process and the whole technique, you know, and Dude. not not fighting it. And that that's what meditation is. It's it's all about surrendering surrendering to yes. meditation. Bro. Okay, I have two thoughts. First one, first thought is that surrender has been like a huge topic for me like in the last week. I've really? been like totally, yes, like I've been learning about surrender and like practicing surrender on, on a deeper level than ever before. Wow. And it just, it, oh, life feels good, dude. That's awesome. Second thing is I have a QHHT session tomorrow. No shit. That's awesome. Yes. I that know. I'm so super excited. How do you go about getting one? Uh how do you go about getting one um there's a website like uh, that's like the the hub for it and okay. you can like type in on in the maps like directory and find people and the like really professional practitioners of this they charge a lot of money but there are people that are training to become those practitioners oh. and they're required to do free sessions and they have to get like 20 free sessions under their belt before they can become a paid practitioner oh wow and so i found um like a, a trainee like an intern cool. who's who's like practicing sessions before they get certified in chicago and they're gonna come to my house my apartment tomorrow and we're gonna do a session dude that's sick that is so cool right yeah man you're gonna have to let me know uh or we're gonna have to talk about it on the next episode that is yeah. awesome dude it's recorded so yeah. I'll get to like I'll I can send you some like clips of stuff to see what crazy stuff I say if if it yeah yeah if it's true. <laughs> Damn we'll man, that is crazy! Wow, I, 
dude, that's that's awesome. I'd love I'd love to I'd love to see clubs, but um, yes, I don't know. It's so, like what what are your thoughts going into it? Are you um, like what 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 do you think? Well, I'm nervous. Um, I feel I'm I'm excited. I'm nervous. Yeah, I I have. I mean, you know, I'm skeptical, but at the same time, like I'm very from the evidence I've seen, like I expect some sort of experience to happen, whether mm-hmm. it's like my subconscious mind or like something crazier that I'm not even aware of. Like, yeah, it does. It doesn't matter. Like I know that something, something's going to happen throughout the session because Jack burning, you know, he told me about his experience and I've seen other sessions on YouTube and like, dude, it, like I said, it gives you chills. Like it is, it's just, you have to, I can't explain it. Yeah. You just got to like take a few minutes and like watch some of like someone's session. Right. Oh, and it makes you like time. want to do it yourself because it's so interesting. <laughs> Dude, that's that's awesome, man. Well, that's that's exciting. Um, yeah. On on the topic of therapy, um, I my therapist has suggested I could try um, doing some kind of hypnosis. Um, I don't know exactly really? what it is, but maybe I'll I'll have to ask him about what he does. Um, yeah. Should, yeah, maybe maybe I'll give that a try. I've never interesting. Never given given it a chance, but. Yeah, that, that's super cool. I th- yeah. I think um back to the topic of surrender. I, I think that's something that I'd like to incorporate more into my life. Um, it's just surrendering. You know, I feel like I feel like I could use that. I think that would be very good yeah. for especially the, the time that I'm in right now. It's just so applicable to like so many things. Mm-hmm. Like any time that you have like a negative emotion like surrender to it you know mm-hmm. anytime you have a positive emotion like surrender to it you know yeah. anytime you know when you're tripping or you're taking an edible or something it's like what do, what do you do to yeah. start feeling good surrender, surrender. yeah you know no you're so, that's so true and it, it it it's like it's another one of those counterintuitive things you know it's like it doesn't make sense to surrender to it but it's so helpful in terms of discovering um, what it, what it's really about. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, so dude, what, 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 what kind of things do you feel like you've been surrendering to these past, this past week that you said you've been thinking about more? Um, well, like I said about, I remember like a few, a few podcasts ago, I had my Kundalini awakening. Yes. Or like I had an experience where I had some sort of energy surge through my body. Yeah. Um, you know, call it what you will. To me, I interpret it as a kundalini awakening, which is basically this uh, Hindu term of like when uh, an energy, a spiritual energy gets like released in your body. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So that that was the first experience that really forced me to surrender. Yeah. Huh. Forced me to surrender to it because if you don't surrender to the energy surging through your body like it just it's basically then you have a panic attack because yeah the energy is going through you whether you like it or not right right so that you know that's been teaching me surrender whenever i have i don't have it anymore but i I had Mm -hmm. a couple like energy surges like that every few days after that so it forced Mm -hmm. me to learn deep surrender when things felt like very panicky yeah Um, yeah no I, and I, then go ahead real quick to what you were saying about you know if you didn't surrender you would have a panic attack i i think that it's important to also realize that we're not always going to be able to surrender that first time like that first moment you know and if you find yourself in that position where you're having a panic attack or even if it's not a panic attack and it's just like you're just like nervous or just whatever it might be you know, surrendering to that is the next step. You know, it's like, there's no, there's no time where you can't surrender. It's like, no matter how far deep into the negative rabbit hole you might be or whatever you might perceive it as, you can always surrender to it. There's never a bad time to surrender to it. Yes. And that's, it goes back to like the counterintuitive thing about like facing the negativity, you know, Mm -hmm. because we have such an, an ingrained belief that like, Go away from things that make me feel bad. Go towards things that make me feel good. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of like a panic attack, for instance, like that feels really bad. But Mm -hmm. the 
way to immediately transform that experience is to surrender to it, which makes no sense in the in the paradigm of go away from bad, go towards good. Mm -hmm. But that's what's really going to make you feel the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's awesome. I think that's something I'm going to keep on my mind um, a little more this week. Because, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I um, actually back on speaking of Jack Birding, when we did the podcast with him, he talked a lot about um, it is what it is type of mentality and like trusting the yeah. universe. And yeah. that's that similar mindset of surrendering. Right. And I feel like that helped me a lot after that episode, just journaling about it and thinking about it. It was like, oh, yeah. just let things happen. Yeah. yeah. Like his message was like, like you're perfect exactly as you are. Like mm -hmm. in all of your junk, like in all of your like neuroses and like whatever bullshit you have going on, it's like mm -hmm. that's perfect as it is. Like come to it with a come to it with oh. acceptance and love. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, okay. There you are. You you broke up for a second there. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So I yeah, I don't know. Oh well. Um, but like how Jack Birding was saying how like everything like everything is perfect as it is. Mm -hmm. And so like even with like all of the stuff that you think is bad about yourself, like maybe you have like a particularly judgmental mind and you feel like mm -hmm. you don't like that part of yourself or like you think that you know, you have this thing wrong with you, maybe you're overweight, maybe there's this other thing. Mm -hmm. but like but jack was saying like that's all like perfect as it is like yeah where you're at is is like is is meant to be here right now like it's it this is your life that you're that you're living through and it, it should be met with acceptance and love exactly where you are yeah absolutely and that's such a great me message um that i wish everybody could hear because it's it's applicable to literally anybody like like the message says it's literally applicable to yeah. anyone and uh, it, it could help <sighs> so many people i feel like because you know so many people struggle with different things and it, even even subconsciously and i feel like even that message could reach the sub subconscious of people because yeah. it's so it's such a powerful thing to recognize yeah yeah i feel like I've been, I feel like a, right now there's kind of this um, de-religiousizing, like there's like this falling away from religion recently mm -hmm. that like America and like the world is going through, you know, like I think our generation is the least religious of any generation in the past. Yeah. But as like we get less religious, like we still kind of have this like spiritual aspect to ourselves that we feel is is uh, not everybody you know my sister mm -hmm. for instance you know she doesn't she doesn't feel any connection like that at all and she's fine with that you know she's happy yeah. with that which is fine but there are some people like myself who feel like they have a very spiritual connection and you know i don't particularly like religion mm -hmm. but i think there's this like i i think there's a genuine spiritual truth that's happening in this world but it's kind of being overshadowed by the age of science and the mm -hmm. age of like uh empirical like hard evidence truth yeah you know yeah but i think like and i think people are disillusioned with spirituality because religion was down everybody's throats for so long that they're just so sick of it mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there's coming like there's coming a point where the spirituality in general is still kind of it still exists and people kind of have that need for spiritual mm -hmm. fulfillment and there's just like i feel like i've been experiencing a lot of kind of spiritual things lately and i ha i've been feeling like a lot of people it's just a very kind of a uh, personal experience because i feel like a lot of people are kind of kind of sick of it and they're kind of like okay yeah sure like that's yeah, yeah. your kundalini awakening right you yeah know? yeah but I feel like there's some like there's some truth in there that needs to be explored and at least given a chance, you know. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. You know, I, I um I, I like to try to see all the sides of things and um I definitely see the value in spirituality and um you know, and also I see 
you know, granted, I'm not a fan of religion, but I, I see the values of religion, kind of like we talked mm -hmm. about on the last podcast of, you know, the community it brought um, or brings, I guess, to this day. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, th I think people just get maybe turned off by the lingo, you know, it's like uh, of religion and spirituality, because it's like this thing that sounds like, uh, I don't know, it, it sounds greater than what it is almost i i, I don't yeah I don't it, it, it when you say like spirituality like i think people think of like something like a, a, apart from reality like something like not it's something that's like greater than than this reality itself but i mm -hmm. but i but my perspective is that like spirituality is is the explanation for reality in mm -hmm. its greatest form you know what Absolutely. i mean yeah like yeah and, and you just choose to explain it in such a way that uses terms that include spirituality right and some yeah people... i mean i think the better it, it, yeah. if i could like replace the word spirituality like the word would be like metaphysical meaning just like yeah phenomena that occur in the universe that isn't like concretely yeah, physical you know concretely yeah. like yeah. you know but it's yeah. like absolutely still yeah i don't know metaphysical is a good is a good word for it yeah no absolutely and you know and i think spiritual is a good word for it too um i just think that maybe you know it depends on who you're talking about because you know some people don't like the word metaphysical I'm, i'd imagine you know yeah. so it's like like you can never yeah. find something that everybody likes so it's like i think that it's important for us all to do things that that work for us you know like i personally like i i i feel like i take a little bit from everywhere because mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. it's just what works for me you know like i don't really yeah. care like but i understand like i understand what you're saying when you're talking about spiritual spirituality kind of things because i like i said i take things from everywhere i consider myself a spiritual person um and i you know and like i said i i like read bible verses I, I don't read bible verses sorry but like if i read them like i i see the value in them like i see the, yeah. the, the golden rules and whatnot you know like i right. see it you know and i also see the science side you know when i see metaphysical yeah. you know like so that's kind of my my kind of whole feeling am amongst the whole thing but yeah you know, i think it's i think it's weird when people try to like be like oh like that's you know that's like not right or something like that because it's like i don't yeah. know like if, if you really look at it you can see that there it is right it's just that's just how somebody interprets it right it's just it's like it feels kind of like a scary term it feels like kind of like a oh like not mm -hmm. scientific like eh, you know yeah. But it's like if if you go and try to experience some some spiritual truth for yourself, like um, you can find like truth almost like as valid as something you could find using science, Absolutely. you know, because it's in your direct experience. Yeah. And, and I think that's like a, a misconception is that like people want to like separate science from spirituality, from religion. You know, it's like these are these are all yeah. like. I mean, you might as well be comparing these things to, you know, this water bottle on my desk because they're all the same thing. It's all reality. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. So it's like, right. No sense in trying to, like, discriminate. Yeah. And I think, like, as science gets deeper and deeper into the stuff it's exploring and finding, I honestly think that we are going to find out some of these spiritual truths in a scientific setting, in a way, about, mm -hmm. like, the, like, the nature of reality how like if you boil everything down it's all just energy like that's literally yeah. string theory like this is yeah <laughs> it's like the hindu the hindus uh like truth core truth is that like everything is just energy like that's all it is and then right. science is like you know string theory it's like everything at the fundamental level is made of a vibration it's a mm -hmm. vibration like that's it just an energy vibration it's yeah. like well that's that's the same thing, just yeah. explained in different terms, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it it, it all connects, like yeah. really everything connects. There's no difference between anything, you know. Yeah. It, it's it sounds really weird to say that, but it's the truth, you know. It's just like why, why are we like? It, it's like some people think they're better than other people. It's like why do you think that? Like just because you yeah. have more money, like why does this this piece of paper? make you better than somebody who doesn't have that piece of paper you know it's like right yeah you know, obviously obviously in practical terms it makes sense because you know that piece of paper can get you a house <laughs> but 
in reality, yeah. reality doesn't care about that piece of paper. Right. Yeah. Again, I mean, that's, that, that's such an interesting observation of like, you know, how a thought layer over a piece of paper makes it incredibly valuable. And it's a yeah. thought layer that the entire world has. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. we collectively have the thought that this piece of paper is worth something collectively. And the only thing stopping that from not having value is the thought. Exactly. That's literally it. it. It's it's all like this, you know, I, I love going back to like, who named a water bottle, a water bottle? Like, why is this a water bottle? You know, why? It it, it, it doesn't make sense, you know, and that goes for yeah. that goes for everything. Like, why is money money? Like, why is this that, you know, it's like, so if you if you break everything down to its barest, you know, value, it's like everything is the exact same, because nothing is more valuable than than anything else. The only thing that makes yeah. something more valuable is because like, you know, a diamond, you, you know, there's not a million diamonds out there, but there's millions of water bottles type thing. And you know? like, a diamond means absolutely nothing to a fucking cat. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a right. cat would, what's more valuable to a cat? Mm -hmm. um, Probably cat the water food. in the water bottle. <laughs> yeah. The cat food. yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's all, it's, com it's completely subjective. At the end of the day, if you can, come at if you can observe the world from a samadhi state of no thought mm -hmm. everything is exactly the same in value everything is perfectly equal yeah and that's when like um in the bhagavad gita you know the bhagavad gita i'm not familiar with that now it's a uh it's like the most sacred hindu text and i'm not like, getting into, into like some hinduism stuff lately actually yeah but, um, but basically what they say is like, it boils down to like, nothing is bad, nothing is good at the end of the day. Like it's all just part of the greater flow of the universe, which is why like, it's like in, in a Samadhi state, no thought, you know, if you kill somebody in the abs, the most absolute sense, it means nothing. As yeah. a human being, you know, it has meaning because right, right. we have yeah. our own agendas and our thoughts about it. But mm -hmm. in the scale of the universe, the, the universe doesn't care if the lion eats the gazelle, you know, the universe doesn't care if um, there's racism, you know, the universe allows for racism to exist, actually, yeah. the universe allows for death to exist. In the most absolute sense, it allows everything to exist equally. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's no discrimination whatsoever. It's, yep. it's, it's kind of crazy when you boil it down to that perspective. Yeah. It, it just makes you realize like, wow, maybe I should be a little less judgmental about, you know, other people and things in life, yeah. you know, it's the balance of like keeping both perspectives though, because we do live in a human world, you know, and, yeah. and I'm a human, I'm a human being, which means that like they're on, on some yeah. level, like I, I do have things that I, that I value more than others. Mm -hmm. But can you balance that with the other perspective as well and taking life a little less seriously, you know, and having a little more fun with it? Because yeah. at the end of the day, nothing, nothing truly matters in the absolute sense. Nothing matters as a mm -hmm. human things, things do matter. And so like, can you balance mm -hmm. both and live in both worlds in a way? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Just ha just recognizing that there is that practical side, but also there's the spiritual side, but also realizing while you have these two sides that they're both the same thing <laughs> so yes. it's, it's like, it's like yes. this weird thing, uh, you know? <laughs> yes you just just you just perfectly describe non-duality dude yeah yeah it, it's 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 such a weird it, it's not even weird it's it, like it really isn't i can't even call it weird because yeah. it's like it, may, it, it makes sense stuff. yeah <laughs> totally it's awesome man that was great <laughs> that was such a good thought stream Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was that was awesome. That was yeah. awesome, and that is what you'll find on the Boundless Enigma <laughs> podcast. <laughs> you never know. You never the know. The value that we bring is just some yeah. crazy talks, and eventually, maybe we'll have we'll have a cool insight. Maybe you never know. You, you never, never know. know. Our value is just hey. through the roof, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. just such a valuable podcast. Yeah, such a valuable. Yeah. We bring so much value to the marketplace. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're just so much better, you know wow <laughs> wow you know what our value is so high i think it deserves a five star rating on spotify if you're yeah. listening on spotify go ahead and hit that five star for us thank you very much <laughs> uh.
Uh, why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, oh man. But, <laughs> anyways, that was a great episode. Um, that was very good. Any last thoughts? I'll, I'll update you on uh, QHHT. I'll talk about Ooh. it on the next episode. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna update you, and then we'll go from there. So, thanks for tuning into the Balance Enigma podcast. We love you so much for tuning in and spending some time with us. It's just so so enjoyable to have your presence uh, over on the other side listening. I'm, I'm glad that you're listening. So, thank you. Absolutely. Peace. Peace.